A lot of time we get questions from viewers and I answer them, but here we got some comments from viewers where they shared some information with me, so I'm going to share it with you right now. I'm Tom Kovichak and this is Tom's Trains and Things. This channel was created to help other modelers who are in need of guidance in pursuing their dream of building a model railroad. And today we're going to go over some comments from viewers where they shared information with me so it would help you out in your model railroad or in your electronics projects for your model railroad. Now, we're going to go over a few of them right here. Now, one of them was from uh, Russ Ratzman. Now, he gave me some suggestions before and I did it on a Q&A and he started opening up and giving me more information. He said, why don't you try the Pro Mini? And what I did was I looked up Pro Mini and I found one of these boards right here. It's a Pro Mini uh, and what do they call it? The Proto Snap. Now this thing right here was about $15, but you get you get the the Pro Mini right here, which is smaller than the Nano, and I should have brought a Nano. Oh, here I have a Nano right here on the board. Here's a Nano right here on the board, and here's the Pro Mini. So you can see. The Pro Mini is just a little bit smaller. It's about three three holes smaller than the than the Nano, but you get the FTDI board on it, which you need to do the programming on it, and you get a few uh, extra breakout boards on here. There's a push button, a light sensor, an RGB LED, and a buzzer right there. The thing about it is. Okay, I got this from Amazon, and it's distributed or it's manufactured by SparkFun. The only thing is, SparkFun discontinued this. Okay, I paid 15 bucks for this. The one good thing about it is this thing right here. I also paid 15 bucks for this right here. This is an FTDI, FT, FDTI. Is it FDTI or FTDI? Well, anyway, it's an FTDI board. And you need this to program the microcontrollers that don't have the programming chip on it. Now, the Nano, the Uno does, but the Pro Mini, some of the smaller boards don't have it on there. But a long time ago, I, I said that I have some uh, Etma. Uh, I have the um, the chip that is on the Uno, and we were going to build our own Uno. And to do that, you need one of these right here to program it. It's the FTD FTDI breakout board, and I paid I think 15 bucks for it there. This right here cost the same amount. It was 15 bucks, and you could find this on my Amazon page. It's discontinued. Spark Fun discontinued manufacturing them. I don't know why, maybe because they didn't have enough sales on them, but get them while they last because they're well worth the money. You get the Pro Mini and you get the FTDI board. Now you're not going to need several FTDI boards. You could you could break these things off of here to make it look like this and use them on different uh, minis or micros. I think the micro has, uh, has the built-in. Uh, FTDI on there but anyway this is a good buy right here it was 50, about 15 bucks or 15.95 and this was and this standalone by itself was the same price that I paid several months ago now another one was uh, let me see Dominic Favre when I was having problems with the um, the Nano. He gave a good suggestion on there about how to use it on the Windows 10. I was having a problem with it and I said that uh, I contacted the manufacturer. They said they had the wrong uh, firmware on it and they was going to send me some. Well, I had I purchased a, a pack of three of them and I finally got it about a couple of days after I did the Q&A video where I mentioned this on there. and. They, they only sent me one and it still had the same issue but uh, Dominic 
gave me a good idea on it and I saw it in the menu all the time but I never really it never you know it never dawned on me to use it but he said use the old bootloader now whenever you're using a nano or anything else that has the conventional bootloader in there or the conventional chip for uh, programming it, the menu item is not going to show up. It's only when you have a nano or, or a, a, another type that has a different uh, chip in it. Now this one says it has a 340 chip instead of what the regular chip is and I'm not sure exactly what the regular chip is but this has a, a 340 and even though you download the driver for the 340 chip you still can't use it and he said use the old bootloader and I'll bring it up on the screen over here and show you how, what it looks like. I'll, I'll connect this up and show you what it looks like on there. So what I got to do is open this up first. Open up Arduino first and I'll bring up a sketch and this is the sketch that I am this is the sketch that you will see tomorrow. So Let me, I got so many USB cables over here hanging on here because each one of the, each one of these has a different, different size USB connector. This one has this size that, that use, you could use on, uh, I guess is for one of my external hard drives that fits in there. And this is the Jeff Bunza uh, sketch. And this is the one where he uses the 17 LEDs to light up the lights in the building randomly. And I put this on a Nano with 11 LEDs. But anyway, I have that Nano hooked up and I'll bring up the, the page right there. Let me see if we can bring this close up. Okay, put this in the middle. All right, now we'll come over here and you can see board and I'll go to nano and I'll go to port and we'll put it on port 8 now you don't see this normally this is at mega 328p but this has the at mega 328p old bootloader and this is what I had to use to upload the program to the nano I'm not going to do it because I'm just having a Nano on right now, but I usually n use a Uno. But, uh, you know, this is just to show you if you, ha if you run into a problem like that where you have a Nano that doesn't work or another one that doesn't work, go over here to... And this, this doesn't show up when you have an Uno or anything else. So, so you, say, you see the processor at my... 328p and you have to click on this one right here okay now let me undo this one and put my uno in there and i'll show you the difference in the menus okay get my other usb cable here and all right Nano, I'll take the Nano off and put it Uno. Uno, port, you see, port, column port 5. Now you see, it doesn't have that menu item in there. It was in between the board and the port. And so if you don't have that issue it's not going to show up in the menu so that's an additional menu item that pops up whenever you have a nano with a different uh, bootloader or an old bootloader or whatever but anyway thanks for that information it was great even the people at uh where did i get that one elegoo yeah this is elegoo uh they didn't even know that that was the case because they sent me another one. So now I have four nanos, but all I have to do is change the bootloader on there. Now here's one, and I forgot to, I'll go to this one here. Now I talked about this uh, 
shield the motor shield on there and I got a few comments on it about some other people had some shields and they said they were they just wanted to know what they would have to do or if I cut off that piece on there and I and I determined that I didn't have to cut off the one piece on here when I went to look at the wiring diagram on there what um, what you're cutting off on the bottom on that trace is for the VIN. Now, this one has a jumper on here, right here, but it's for the VCC, the five volts. So if I put this jumper across the two pins, this will draw power through the five volt pin to power the chip on here. Now, if I take it off, it'll use the external power on here and go through the voltage regulator that's built into here to power the chip. Now, standing off, you know, using the standoffs on all of these, I was able to check to see, you know, what was going on with he over here to see what was going on underneath and being able to take readings on here without trying to stick things into the, the pins up on the top or into the slots on the top. But anyway, what I found out was a lot of these pins on here are just pass-throughs. They don't connect to anything on the board. And if you look at your wiring diagram, if you're familiar with wiring diagrams, and let me see if I could pull one up here. I'll pull up Adobe and see if I can bring up a uh, motor shield revision three. Let me see if I could pull up both of them at the same time. Let me bring this one up. Okay, and I'll bring this over here where you could see it. Excuse me for a minute here. And I'll try to bring up mine open and this is motor shield H was it under M motor motor driver motor driver motor shield version 2.2 there we go okay now and let me get close up on it Here's the wiring diagram for my, I didn't want to maximize that. Here's the, here's mine. Now here's the jumper right here. And see this only disconnects VCC. Let me make this bigger here. That jumper only disconnects the VCC. So that's the five volts right here is the VIN this is actually the pins coming off of your UNO so you can see the only ones that are hooked up are the ones that are extended out so the reset the VCC and the two grounds the pin, tw pin 23 with the voltage in is not connected to anything and you can see on the other side over here pins 9 through 15 are connected now these right here i'm not sure exactly what these are on here but these may be the same thing as what you see over here on the side now let me bring this and i was on the let me see bring it over here and these are other two jumpers so here's the jumper for the sense now on these, there's no way that I could disconnect the brake on here like you can on the Uno or the other uh, motor board. So, and those are on pins, usually on pins eight and nine, but you would have to go on your uh, schematic to see. And right here, where's the brake? It doesn't show the brake on here. Maybe it's ENB and ENA, EA, 
you got to go back and forth and look. E A E A E A is ten and eleven, so no, it's not that. But anyway, on here, that's what it is. And then this pin V I N is not connected; it's just a pass-through pin. But on the Arduino board, and let me make it a little bit bigger. And bring it down here. This is the this is what you're cutting here, and this is going to your VIN. On you on the Arduino board, it everything goes through. This is your chip on your uh, motor, and here's the extra uh, pins that are sitting up on top. Now let me see. Now, see, they don't actually show the Arduino board on here. They just show the chip that's on the uh, motor shield. But anyway, I'm presuming that everything is going through and everything is connected through the board because they're using these, uh, oops, they're using these six connectors over, or six connectors, one, two, three, four, they're using these four, oh, right here, these four, these six right here. They're using these connectors. These are the connectors that are up on the board itself. And then these are the headers on the side. So A4 and 5 isn't connected. PWMA, 5 and 6, that's O, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's four, five, six. There's break. There's one and two. So this is high. This is pins eight and nine. See, they 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 mark these one through six, one through eight. But this, if you recognize this, this is your digital. This is your digital pins, and this is your power pins over here. And you can see most of these pins are hooked up on the Arduino shield except for a couple of these pins over here but the power this is the power right here and you can see the VI end is hooked up going through the board that's why you have this that you could cut this right here and also if you want to on the DCC you don't need the brakes on there so you could also cut these two on here if you have the uh, Arduino shield or if you have another shield that has all these uh, uh, tabs on the bottom of the shield. Now this is for sensing and you want to have the sensors connected on there. But anyway, that's what I found and I wanted to share that with you. And there was another one that uh, Donald uh, Whitman told me about and it was about a 12 to 24 volt dimmer that he got from Amazon for two dollars and 36 cents so if you have those LED light strings and you're paying an enormous price for those transformers and everything else these dimmer switch these dimmer controls will help you out and let me get one of them Okay, I got a box of three of them for about seven dollars and some change, but here's what it looks like right here. Individually, they're two dollars and thirty-six cents, and uh, Don Don uh, sent me a picture of it. He took it apart and everything to show me what it, and I took it apart also to take a look for myself. And it's just got a five-five-five timer in there. It's got an op amplifier in there and some resistors capacitors and a potentiometer on there for two dollars and 36 cents per unit so i got three of them i had to i bought three of them for seven and some change because the one individual one was not eligible for prime so since i'm a prime member i got the three pack for seven bucks but anyway, these are really good. They work. I tried it out on my light strips, and you just need an external power supply, anywhere from 12 to 24 volts, and it will dim and brighten your LED strips. So thank you, Donald, for that information. Now I have three of them here, and you get a little itty bitty, 
You used to get books and stuff with stuff. Now you get a little piece of paper that you can barely see. I have to get out my little, I, I have to get out my magnifying glass to see it. But anyway, <laughs> that's what I got for today. So thank you very much for all that information. Did I get everything here? I got, oh, let me show you what, what's coming out tomorrow. Okay, this is it right here. Let me get this other stuff out of the way. But anyway, this is... I'm starting on next week's one. But this is this will be out on Saturday, tomorrow. And these are ambient light sensors right here. And, and you'll see that in the video. Lesson number five on Arduino Made Easy. So, that's all I got for you right now. I'm going to have some more stuff coming out. I'll have it coming out sporadically. I'm not going to be on a uh, given schedule for right now. We're taking it easy for a little bit, so every once in a while when I get the urge to make a video, I'll be putting out a video, but I'll be putting out the Saturday video, Lesson 5, and then this that Lesson 5 is two two videos in one it'll cut it'll it's a two-parter so it'll the second part will be on may the 12th lesson six where we're going to actually light up some leds with those ambient light sensors on there and shout out monday evening will be there uh still like doing that that's my favorite one to do and for those that did the thumbs down they i didn't get any thumbs down on that last shout out monday evening be, when i called them out so go figure but anyway we'll see you don't forget to subscribe and check out my playlist and if you feel like it contribute on patreon so thank you very much and we'll see you